Hello everybody, Jordan here. I wanted to make a video about the latest update to the Cycle Frontier that probably a lot of you have maybe already heard of, but I wanted to give my two cents on this and uh, talk a little bit about it because we've had several hours to kind of think about it and to stew on what I really think about it. And I think that there are <clears throat> There are some key elements that I'd like to talk about and some ideas that I have that might be useful to the devs or maybe us in the community, we can talk about these things. Something that I noticed was that a lot of people felt blindsided by this change and that maybe they didn't feel like their opinion had been heard about whether this was a good change or a bad change. And so feel free to leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think about it. but. Do try and wait to the end of the video because your opinions might change as you hear what I have to say in the video. So sit tight. I'm going to try and edit this video the least I can and just kind of have it be my free flowing thoughts um, because I feel like that's more candid. And honestly, I just have a couple of notes written down and I don't really have a script for this at all. The important information, if you haven't heard, is that they've pushed season three's wipe back to March 29th. After March 29th, there will be the last wipe ever, and we will start season three. After season three, they've said that they will no longer have mandatory wipes, but there might be a chance to voluntarily wipe your progress for rewards. So essentially, there's going to be some type of prestiging system. You might think Call of Duty or Hunt Showdown. Another really big question that I've heard people ask a lot that I can answer here is what about the starter packs? Some people bought starter packs that uh, essentially at the beginning of every season give you some bonuses. From what I've heard, they aren't planning on refunding those, um, but they're planning on reworking how those starter packages work. And most likely those packs will give you some sort of a reward periodically throughout the year. I'm not exactly sure how it's going to work. I'm not even sure if they know how it's going to work yet, um, but that's the idea. So in general, I've heard a lot of feedback about this and... From what I've heard, most of it seems negative and most of it seems like people think that this is going to completely change the type of game that this is. And although I think, yes, it will completely change how this game plays out, I'm not necessarily convinced that it's a bad thing. I think that what they're converting the game into, there's nothing that exists like it. I think the closest thing that might be like it is Hunt Showdown. Now you might say, Jordan, Hunt Showdown doesn't have the same type of looting and gear system that the Cycle Frontier has. It's okay, I'm not trying to say that they're going to be the same same game, but I think it's basically the closest, closest example that we have, so it might be helpful to mention. One of the biggest differences in Hunt Showdown is that more or less all of the weapons are viable. So in Hunt Showdown, you can level up from level one to 100 and once you reach level 100, you can prestige. Once you reach level 100, you can unlock a cosmetic and you, and I think there's some other bonuses as well, but, uh, but basically the biggest thing that everyone else can see is that uh, you'll now show up as level two prestige. Basically all of the weapons that you get at level one all the way to level 100 are more or less balanced. Um, so you can definitely kill somebody with the worst weapon in the game and you can definitely kill somebody with the best best weapon in the game. Now, that's partially because of the time to kill in Hunt Showdown. If you're shooting people in the body or the legs, it can actually take quite a long time, but pretty much any gun, if you shoot them in the head, will one-shot them, um, with the exception of low-caliber, small, you know, pistols at long range. If you shoot somebody in the head, they will not die. So that being said, the weapons all basically feel like you can win with them. Now, are some weapons better and do you unlock certain play styles by leveling up and getting access to more things in your loadout? Yes, like there are advantages to being at level 100 and having everything unlocked, but does it mean that you have no chance? Um, which I think is what some people feel like right now. If you're going in with white armor and you're going up against somebody with full exotic, you kind of feel like there's no chance. Your PDW might kill against their brute, but probably only if they're not paying attention or not even looking at you. Now, that being said, if the cycle is going to become more like Hunt Showdown, I think that we run into a problem, which is basically that because there is no wipe, you can keep collecting weapons till the end of time. And one of the things that they've said that, they'll, that they want to do to try and combat 
people having a bunch of good weapons is they want to make the economy different and they want to make the better weapons even more rare than they currently are. This is this is the first point which I actually disagree with them. I think that they're being a little bit short sighted with this because no matter how rare you make a weapon in a game, if there is no reset, eventually people will get it. And if people play your game for years, eventually everyone will have the good weapons. At that point, if anyone new comes into the game and the good weapons are still much better than the beginning weapons, they will be turned off from the game. And unless there are enough new people consistently playing the game, there will not be a community of low level people big enough to support new people getting into the game without getting stomped on by people that have everything. Now, there's two ways that you can fix that, right? You can fix that by making the weapons balanced so that you can kill anyone with any weapon and no weapon is better than any other weapon. But as you can see with a game like The Cycle where you're looting and you're crafting and you're getting your levels up with the factions, um, there's a power you know, curve that's part of the game experience. You want to play the game to unlock the better weapons so that you feel like you're stronger than the people that are just starting, which is part of the, re the fundamental reason of why The Cycle is currently struggling because... How can you have a power dynamic and have people feel like they're getting stronger without those people inadvertently coming back around and killing the people that are beginning? Some people criticize the cycle and they say that, oh, you know, after season one, um, you know, with the cheater problem, which granted is more or less completely fixed. Like there are very few, if any, cheaters that I've seen. I've gotten maybe like two or three cheater compensation packages in all of season two, which is a thousand times better than season one. Um, so why aren't people coming back as much as you would think they would if they liked season one so much, aside from the cheating? So if, if the cheating's fixed and there's more content and there's a new map and whatever, um, there's more quality of life, why are there still less people playing? I've spent a lot of time playing the game and I've spent a lot of time voiping people on the surface of fortuna 3 in the game and i actually think that there are a lot of people every week that are new people to the game that are trying the game for the first time i think that there are a lot of people coming back to the game seeing what it's like but i think the reason why we aren't seeing any significant growth in the number of daily users is because whenever we do get new people coming into the game they're turned off by the fact that they're getting killed by people with endgame gear. People that are coming back from having played see, oh, there are no cheaters, but I'm getting killed by people with endgame gear. I don't think making it so that there are no wipes is gonna fix that problem. In fact, I think in season two, we're getting a look at what a really long season looks like. Granted, I know that they said that they need to balance things and, and whatever, but I truly think that no amount of balance is going to make the game work where there's good weapons and bad weapons, good armor and bad armor, because there's just a power differential. And unless you're going to create lobbies where all the people with juice gear go and all the people with baby gear go, it's never going to work. And even if you did split the player base like that, people wouldn't be happy because there's a million and one arguments for why splitting up the, the player base is a bad idea. And we don't have to talk about that right now. But... I don't want to talk about just problems. I do think that there are solutions um, to these problems. I think there are ways that you could make the cycle frontier fit in a no wipe on showdown prestige system scenario. The biggest way that I think you could do that is making all of the weapons balanced, making it so that every weapon is about the same uh, as any other weapon. Uh, it's just more about your play style and what type of guns you like. In Hunt Showdown, yeah, there are some favorites. Yeah, there are some weapons that stand out. But in general, you can pretty much play whatever the heck you like and what it fits into your play style. However, since they've basically said, we're going to make the good weapons even rarer because we want them to feel more worth it and whatever, I, I really don't think they're even considering this type of an idea because they want people to grind the game, play, keep on playing and unlock the good stuff so that they feel like they've progressed through the power curve of the game. So assuming that they're not willing to do something like that, I think that another approach similar to what Tarkov does 
Um, because Escape from Tarkov, if you play the game a lot, which granted, part of the reason why you haven't seen me making Cycle Frontier videos recently is because I've actually been playing Tarkov and I don't feel knowledgeable, knowledgeable enough to make Tarkov videos right now. Anyways, I've been playing a lot of Tarkov. There's a hundred times the amount of hours and grind that you can put into Tarkov than you can into the cycle. But even so, I think there are so much more people losing gear to the AI in Tarkov than there are in the cycle. If you look at these people's, you know, these streamers that play for a thousand million hours, um, their stashes are full of brutes and basilisks and exotic armor and whatever. They're, they're never going to run out of good armor. And with good weapons in the cycle, the AI is a joke. I mean, once you get the hammer, you can basically three shot a marauder. A regular marauder there are ways to cheese the marauders with jumping and uh and you can even time it perfectly so that it'll ah, open up its mouth and then you shoot it once and then it'll go ah, and open up its mouth again and then shoot it again like we've figured out exactly how to murder the ai perfectly some people hate on the ai in tarkov they're like oh my gosh the scavs one shot me in the head and whatever and it's so unfair yeah it is kind of unfair but they have guns i guess and also the main point that I'm trying to make here is that people lose good gear to the AI. In the cycle, people aren't losing gear in weird ways like that. They're not losing gear to the AI. They're not losing gear to getting timed out of, of the raid. Like, there's just almost no way to lose your gear. There's not even any really, like, environmental hazards in the cycle. Like, I guess you could fall to your death, but ever since they lowered the fall damage... I don't even feel like people are losing their gear that way very much anymore. Like there are very few places where you can fall and completely die from it. And you have to be like really messing up to do that. So my idea is, is that in the cycle, one way that you could keep things fresh is you could have more ways to die to not players or rework the backpack system. Currently, there are ways for somebody to, go on, somebody to go on a killing spree and collect all of the gear from every single person that they've killed. The backpack capacity is insane. And in Tarkov, you really get the feeling like you can't carry everything. Hell, you could, you could kill one person and not feel like you could take out all their loot. Because maybe you already had two guns and you can't fit their guns. So you only have like a backpack to fit their guns, their armor any loot that they had in their backpack. And the other thing is, is in Tarkov, once you have all that crap in your backpack, you move slow. In fact, there's a point at which you can be so heavy that your stamina drains just by walking to where you just have no stamina left. In the cycle, there's no, there's no like issue with like trying to get out with all this gear. You just like sprint across the map, call in an evac and get out and then hoard even more. You know, like, one of the ways you could fix it is having harder AI, harder PVE. You could even create AI bosses. Like in Tarkov, there's bosses like um, that are nigh unkillable. They kill a ton of people and you have to get really lucky to like, you know, perfectly kill them. And if they're, you know, maybe like the Howler, maybe the Howler is just so dangerous that like it accidentally, you know, not accidentally kills you. But see, this is kind of the other issue is that I think that this type of community that they're trying to build here, the cycle, um, like a casual community, I think a casual community would hate the idea of getting murked by the AI, of losing gear to a computer. And so I think, I think the community themselves would hate this idea. The, the very thing that would keep it fresh and keep them having to like get more gear and because with no wipe, like you're just going to accumulate stuff. Um, but I think that they would hate that because they'd be like, oh my gosh, like I didn't even stand a chance, whatever. Like I just got randomly killed by the AI. Ooh. Like they want to know that there was a reason for why they died. And so I think that's why, you know, unless you're into inflicting pain, emotional pain on yourself and playing a game like Tarkov where you're going to lose stuff and you just, you know, you listen to people that have played Tarkov for forever and they kind of just accept that they're going to lose stuff. Like, they give up and they're like, yeah, sometimes you're just going to die to scabs. Sometimes you're just going to get a boss that like shows up in your face and slaps you and you die. Um, so I don't even know if that's a possible solution. And then the other solution that I can think of is making the prestige system so rewarding 
that there's no way anybody would just chill around at level 100 max level and just like stomp on noobs all day. But the problem is I've been thinking and I can't think of a single thing in the game currently that would be rewarding enough for people to choose to willingly give up all of their good weapons and grind back to level 20 traders again. I really can't think of anything. Currently we have skins. Maybe you unlock a free skin when you prestige. I think that there are some really cool skins and I think the art team on the cycle has done a great job with the new skins that they've put out. But I don't know if that's enough for everyone to want to grind through all that again. The other one is like a badge or like a prestige level where, you know, you kill somebody and it says you were killed by Jordan Merrill, prestige level two or prestige level three or whatever it may be. And at that point, it's kind of just a vanity thing where it's like, ooh, I want to show people how much time I've spent on the game. I'm going to get to prestige level 50 or whatever it is. I just, I think the majority of the people wouldn't really go for that. So I can't think of anything. Can you think of something that would be rewarding enough to be willing to completely wipe your account? Have to go through the quests again, you know, level up all your factions, not have access to all the best weapons. Essentially, you would be facing sweaty people from the very beginning again. I don't know. I just don't know if there's, I mean, I, I really do hope that, that we can find some way to make it work because I really do love the games and I know that the devs love the game too. And so, you know, I'm choosing to believe in them and in the community that somehow we're going to pull through this and it's going to be even better on the other side because I don't want this game to die. I don't want the community to rebel against it. I think that if the devs have decided this, we can, we have two options. We can either be mad at them, nothing's going to change, or we can accept that this is the direction that they think is the best and try and make the best of it try and come up with good ideas about how these things can work. You know, part of that happens here on, on YouTube. Part of that happens in the comments section. I've talked to the lead game designers over at Jaeger and they watch our YouTube videos. They know what we're talking about in the community. And you may think, oh, they're totally not listening, but they do. And you know, maybe they, they don't do the things that you think would be the best for the game, but maybe they're trying their best to do what's best for the game. So anyways, y'all, some of that was a little bit of a ramble. Um, I do apologize. I'm sorry that I haven't posted more videos. I've been sick for the past couple weeks and you can probably tell by my voice that I'm still not 100%. Um, but I wanted to get a video out here because I'm really passionate about this. And, um, and I know that this is kind of a crazy time for the cycle because everything feels like uncertain and crazy and like we don't have any information about what's actually going to happen. And it's still like two months until we actually get a wipe again. I'm personally hoping that we can get like a soft wipe before March 29th. I was talking to Feralus uh, in the general chat on the discord and I was kind of like, hey, like, why can't we just like wipe it? You know, just just do like a quick wipe. Honestly, in between January 12th and March 29th, I was like, that's almost three months. That's almost like what a normal wipe would have been. Why not just wipe it? Give people a fresh experience. I know that I would personally come back and start playing the game again if that happened. Because then at least I'd be going up against a bunch of other people with no gear as opposed to knowing that I'm going to go in with everybody has fully forged gear. And, and I don't really want to sit in Theris and have to deal with all the rats to get that type of gear right now. Yeah, that's my two cents. Love y'all. Take care. I'll see you in the next one. If you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel. Um, we're on our way to like 700 subs or something like that. So things are getting crazy. Thank you all. Take care.